Lankeshwinji was joining through VC call from the flag. The results of Q1 FY22 are already with you for some time now, and we are sure that you would have already gone through them. The chairman and managing director has really already dealt with most of the important aspects of the financial results for the year ended as well as quarter ended for Q1 FY22. Uh, during the interaction uh, with the shareholders in the AGM held very recently on 14th of August uh, 21. However, I would like to share with you some of the key indicators relevant for our discussion today. Q1 financial uh, 22 results of consolidated uh, financial statements, the comparative performance of Q1 FI22 with that of Q1 FI21 and Q4 FI21 have been given in the presentation already circulated. Gross income in Q1 FI22 is 1,430 crores as compared to rupees 1,116 crores in the previous quarter Q4 FI21, an increase by rupees 314 crores at 28.14%. Compared to Q1 FI21, gross income rupees 993 crores, there is an increase of Rs. 447 crores at 45.47 percent. The activity is Rs. 99 crores in Q1 FI22 as compared to Rs. 93 crores in Q4 FI21, an increase by 6.45 percent compared to Q1 FI21 PBC of Rs. 147 crores. Uh, there is a decrease by 32.65 percent. Decrease in PBT year on year basis is on account of increase in raw material prices. It will be noticed that the gross income of P division has registered a significant increase of about 58% over corresponding quarter of the previous year and 40% over the previous quarter. However, the AHPL revenue has gone down by 5% over corresponding quarter of the previous year and 19% from the immediate previous quarter. The consolidated PBT has come down by 33% on um, year on year basis and 6% on quarter on quarter basis. Now, this is the consolidation position. We will not let us go to standalone financial results of uh, P and processing divisions. First, let me take a P division. Q1 FI22 results, the gross income for, for the Q1 FI22 is uh, rupees 1,257 crores as compared to Rs. 795 crores in the corresponding quarter of Q1 FI21, registering an increase of Rs. 462 crores at 58%. The PBT for the Q1 FI22 is Rs. 93 crores as compared to Rs. 112 crores in Q1 FI21, a decrease of Rs. 19 crores at 17%. You may notice that in spite of significant increase in gross income, the PBT has come down by 17% compared to corresponding quarter of the previous year. Compared to the previous quarter, a marginal increase of 12% in PBT is started. As in the recent past, the uncontrolled steep increase in raw material prices, particularly soybean, meal, and fish meat, and dairy products, such as soya lecithin and fish oil have been the major contributing factors for the drastic fall in the margins in spite of increase in uh, sale of peas. The fish meal price has gone up to 95% per kg in Q1 FI21 as compared to 91 per kg in Q4 FI21 and now it is around 115 rupees per kg. Due to increase in soya bean meal price, consumers like poultry industry has shifted to fish meal and soya bean meal. Some soya bean meal. However, with the announcement of permission to import soya bean meal, lifting of ban on fish catches, the, which commences from 1st of August, the industry is expecting stabilization of fish meal prices in due course. The soya bean meal price, uh, which was at 46 rupees per kg in Q4 FI21, short of to 65 rupees per kg in Q1 FI22, and went further up to 105 rupees per kg recently. After the announcement of import of soya bean meal, the prices started coming down about 95 pounds. For importing soya bean meal, customs notification regarding procedures for import is awaited. 
hopefully with imported soya bean meal and local fresh uh, crop commencing uh, the fresh soya crop commencing from second half of september the industry expects the stabilization of the price in due course the company after a long time increased the feed price by 2 to, uh, to, uh, to 15 by say per kg in april 21 and by rupees 3 rupees per kg in may 21 and further increase of rupees 4.25 in august 21 to recover rm cost partially the impact of which can be seen in Q2 if I, uh, 22. I mean, August 21 increase of 4 to 25 will have an impact in the current quarter, ongoing quarter. The positive impact of softening of RM price, if any, can be seen only in Q3 if I 22. Shim processing division, coming to the shim processing ring, the uh, Q1 FI 22 results. The gross, the gross income for the Q1 FI 22 is 175 crores as compared to 189 crores in Q1 FI 21. Registering a degrowth by it is 14 crores at 7.41 percent due to non-availability of containers and slowdown in the export by implementing more quality checks in view of the US FDA recall. The PVT for the Q1 FI 22 is 8 crores as compared to 34 crores in Q1 FI21, a decrease of 26 crores mainly due to withdrawal of MEAI scheme. Increase in marketing expenses on account of steep increase in the ocean price. Impact of MEA withdrawal. The gross income includes export incentives of 5% MES and, uh, and 3% duty drawback on FOB value of export, which were contributing significantly to the PVT of the company. However, the government of India withdrew MES in two phases, firstly restricting MES incentives from September 20th to December 20th to rupees 2 crores for four months, and from January 21 onwards, it was completely withdrawn. Uh, on account of the typical MES incentives, there is a reduction in the income by about 8.10 crores. The government of India has announced in place of MES, has announced in the place of MES, incentive, a new incentive scheme called Revision of Duties and Taxes on Export Products called Argo DTEP would be introduced, which is effective from 1st January 21. However, considerable time has been taken to announce the new scheme, and recently, it's on 17th of August 2021, the Government of India announced the ROTEP scheme of issuing tradable yield credits at 2.5% or FOB value on exports, subject to a cap of 16 rupees per kg. As a result, the company's effective benefit would be only at about 2% on account of the cap of 16 rupees per kg. With, uh, with this has not been taken into consideration in Q1 FI22 results. Effectively, 3% net disadvantage to the company on withdrawal of earlier MEI scheme uh, will have an impact on the financial statements of the company, results of the company. And the necessary rules and procedures regarding grant of claim uh, application, time period for application, record keeping, air and etc. would be notified by the CBSC uh, in due course. This, uh, I mentioned the, there has been very steep, unabated increase in the ocean price, uh, going by about 300 percent over the earlier freight rates. The company along with other exporters have made several representations to the government uh, to various other agencies like MPEDA to take initiative to curb this unlimited site increase. The, any uh, uh, conceivable uh, results are ready to come. The volume of exports during Q1 FI22 compared to Q1 FI21 decreased on account of shortage of containers availability. Slowing down of export of cooked ships for strengthening of quality control systems in your US FDA recall. Exceptional item of uh, rupees 4.10 crores taken to profit and loss for Q1 FI22 on account of product recall. Income consisting mainly in exchange fluctuations and ease uh, on investment of surplus funds has decreased by about 4.68 crores due to decrease in ease on MF, uh, mutual funds and other investments and also. Uh, the uh, foreign exchange fluctuations. 
the general industry overview, the world, as you know, had suffered the impact of the first wave, and the effect of second wave appears to have uh, have receded to a great extent now, and the economies of countries linking back to normalcy. But the threat of a third wave, COVID-19, is looming large, and the countries are getting ready to face it to prevent major impact by vaccinating their population and other preventive measures. During the phase of the second wave, the economic activity was not disturbed as much as it did in the case of first wave, though India had a high, higher number of positive cases and fatalities. The industrial growth also picked up in almost all sectors, except maybe industries like tourism, hospitality, etc. The demand for the products and services picked up fast, supporting, uh, picked up fast supporting the manufacturing sector. Seafood industry is no exception to this. The restaurants, food services, etc. brought back to normalcy with the increase in demand for seafood, including processes. During the first half of 21, the same culture has been very good, expected to continue during the second half also. The demand for the product also is likely to increase in the second half due to occasions like Thanksgiving Day, Easter, Easter, Christmas, New Year, Chinese uh, New Year, etc. Therefore, the future of the industry looks quite promising. Coming to the production and uh, feed consumption, uh, the same feed consumption in India declined to 9.55 lakh tons in 2020. However, as the demand for shrimp is expected to increase in 2021 due to return of normalcy and favorable shrimp culture conditions, the shrimp feed consumption is expected to grow by about 5 to 15 percent over the previous year, with an estimated consumption of shrimp feed around 11 lakh tons uh, during 21. 2021. The company's feed sales during 2020 was about 4.55 lakhs metric tons and expected to be around 5.25 lakhs metric tons in 2021, an increase of 15%. The company's expected share in the feed of 48% to 50%. With regard to processing and exports, the shrimp production and exports from India in 2020 was 5.75 lakh metric tons in 2020. However, during the current year, that is 2021, the production and exports of shrimp is estimated at around 6.5 lakh metric tons, a growth of about 10 to 15 percent over the previous year. The company's shrimp export in 2020 is about 12,192 metric tons. The estimated export in 2021 is about 12,700 metric tons, maintaining almost the same level as in 2020. Yeah. The recall, uh, now let me just explain the, the issue of recall of some of the containers of shrimps shipped by Amati uh, frozen foods, uh, processing division. The company has issued a corporate announcement a couple of days back communicating the status of initial recall and also expanded recall of cooked ship products on potential for contamination uh, due to the presence of salmonella in the recalled product. As stated in Q1 FI22, a sum of uh, 4.10 crores has been charged off as returned destroyed product as against the total value of 16.11 crores in the initial uh, recall. Since the recall is more than 45 days as of now, further returns of the products for refunds appear to be uh, not significant. However, the recall is open till the expiry date of the product, which is a year from now. As far as the expanded recall is concerned, the quantity is 613.8862 metric tons with a value of 50 crores to 50.12 crores covering products imported into U.S. from November 20 to May 21. The company is in the process of ascertaining the inventory of the product with containers, distributors, etc., and evaluate the possibility of the extent, possibility and the extent of results that could come for claim. The process is on because it, uh, the recall was announced very recently. We have now uh, we got the only information about 70 tons is in the warehouse. The, the, this, this is what the information that we have right now. But we have to wait for some more time uh, The how much, what is the return that we are going to uh, uh, get uh, from this second recall. At this stage, I would like to uh, conclude with positive note 
that the aquaculture industry is poised for a promising growth. Right? Uh, the whatever that recall uh, is uh, a, a, it's a, a, it's not an uh, a normal thing. It's a, something which has happened as a uh, an, uh, aberration, and I think in the course of time. Uh, we will be able to resolve these issues, and we have already put lot of we have taken lot of efforts to strengthen our checks and uh, systems and engaging the food, uh, the uh, safety, public health, consumer safety, and regulatory compliances, uh, and uh, they have all been giving very fruitful results, and we should be able to resolve these issues very soon and come back to normalcy, and we do not foresee any serious impact or account of this in the our uh, image of the company or reputation of the company since this kind of a situation never happened in the past two and a half decades and this is the first time it is happening and uh, we are confident that our uh, in consultation in discussion with our customers we will be able to uh, establish uh, the uh, whatever the necessary steps are uh, taken we'll do it and we will be confident that such a situation they will never arise I think with this, I would like to conclude and go into question and answers now. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. If you have a question, please press star and one on your telephone keypad and wait for your turn to ask the question. If you would like to withdraw your request, you may do so by pressing star and one again. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a question, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. And participants are kindly requested to restrict with two questions in the initial and join the queue for further questions. First question comes from Aniruddha Doshi from ICIC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Sir, uh, first of all, what is likely to be the maximum impact on uh, our profitability considering the shrimps uh, that are getting rejected. So uh, obviously the maximum impact may get uh, uh, accounted or not, but uh, what what is the fair assumption on the loss that we may have to incur on this account? Point number two, uh, the NEI's benefit were around 5% and the road test benefits are 2.5% that to uh, considering the cap it will be around 2%. So uh, how do you see the 3% gap that will be bridged? Or it will be an impact on the profitability initially and then it will get absorbed in the entire chain value chain that is farmers, feed manufacturers and exporters, all three. Uh, uh, yeah, so these are the two main questions from my side. Thanks. Uh, uh, let me answer the first question that uh, the impact of this recall, um, so Andrew, that's uh, we mentioned in our corporate announcement. In the first, uh, that is initial recall, I think it's about 16 crores in odd. We have received about 4 crores, say I would say around roughly 25% is the impact. And what we see is that it, uh, the initial recall was made uh, way back in uh, 20, June 25th. Until now, almost we have uh, uh, two months, two months uh, time that we have only got only uh, this uh, value, but four crores only we have received, and we have written off that amount already in the profit and loss account. And the further, then definitely uh, since the recall is still open, uh, we may get some more uh, such claims, but we will not foresee a significant impact on the profitability of this because of such claims. So we have only, as far as the, uh, the product return is, I think that we have completely taken care of all the products that have been returned and they are destroyed and there may not be any more left out in the initial, uh, the primary uh, initial recall. Uh, over and above that. Then coming to the second recall, this is about uh, 50 crores, which is the financial impact, and 613 uh, tons are involved. See, this has been uh, issued, and we are just waiting and saying, we have to really, we are not in a position to exactly 
figure out how much is going to be the return. It happens like this if you look at the normal process when the, it is distributed from the, uh, the consignee's uh, uh, warehouse to the distributors to ultimate the retailers and then to the customers. We don't know the entire channel. So they normally how much time it takes and all uh, the, the, though there is a, uh, a shelf life of the product which is there for one year or two years, but that does not mean that it is made, uh, in the stores or in the refrigerators in the houses till that period. The, normally the tendency is that you take the, uh, buy the goods, buy the products, particularly food products, you consume it uh, as soon as possible. It cannot go for more than two weeks maximum in the uh, refrigerators. So I, we don't see that this is going to be a big uh, impact. But in any case, as you uh, asked, what is the maximum? The maximum could be 50, the minimum could be zero. So that is the range. So the, if you take what has happened in the first, uh, the initial uh, recall, it's around 25%. Okay, let us take 25 to 30%. 30% means about 50 into 15 crores. That may be our very, very preliminary assessment as of now. But we have to wait and see that we cannot give any guarantee as of now. But it could be anywhere between uh, 15 uh, crores, 20 crores maximum. It may not be that. It is only our uh, an assessment guesswork. But we have to wait and see how the things develop. Then the oh. second question uh, it comes uh, regarding the price. The, uh, when we lose this uh, 3% uh, deficit in the incentives that the government has announced, as you rightly said, it's normally in the course it should get distributed among the, all the three stakeholders, the processors or the farmers or the uh, buyers. The, the, it has to get adjusted in the course of time. I think uh, we are expecting that it will happen in due course. Okay, sir, uh, just uh, last question on this. So, now the benefit is retrospective from 1st of January. So, uh, do you see that uh, uh, the industry, including Avanti, uh, will be posting a one-time, uh, 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 because we, it is not an accrued income, so we will be accruing all the income in September quarter for the January to September period? Yeah, see, uh, yeah, you are right. Uh, because see the uh, because it has come into effect from January uh, 21st, uh, 21 January. The first quarter uh, the uh, the value is about uh, uh, three crores 88 lakhs 50 thousand. That is what we have uh, worked out and estimated. And uh, that is the first quarter. That is Q1 in the calendar year. That is January to March. Coming to the second quarter, it is four crores 65 lakhs. That is the April, May, June quarter. So total it will be for the first half of the year, it will be 8.53 crores which pertains to the earlier period. Coming to the current quarter, we are yet to get the full information. Only in the July it is about 1 crore 96 lakhs. So total as of now, the benefit which uh, we, have, uh, we are estimating is about 10.50 crores. Uh, added to that, August and September also we have to see and once uh, the government announces the scheme, how it should be, they are talking that it will come automatically, it will be credited uh, along with the uh, your shipping bills, so it will be credited. But as you know, the government, we have to see the processes and how they are going to do it, and it is automatically credited to our account, that's what they are saying. These scripts are given, they are tradable scripts, uh, they are tradable scripts. So this can be utilized for payment of duties and it is the imports of the products which are notified. I mean, it is by and large in the same uh, uh, lines as it was in the MEIS. So, uh, we hope that maybe with a discount of another 5% or so on this, that overall, let us say 10 crores, 50 lakhs, you have to give a, a discount of about 40 to 5% in the course of the trade, and that is when selling it. So, we may get uh, the net benefit uh, of about 10 crores, uh, we should be able to get from the January to July. Okay, okay, so, so, so uh, this is very helpful, sir. Many so this 8.53 crores belonging to the first six months of this calendar year, added to that this three months, July, August, September, will be reflected in the, uh, the this current current quarter, that is uh, Q2, Q2 of the uh, year, uh, 522. Yes, yes, you are right. Yes. Yes.
Okay, so, okay, so, so, so this is uh, very helpful. Uh, just lastly, can you indicate on the uh, loss that we may have to book, will that be get booked in FY22 or it may get uh, uh, booked in FY23 itself? I don't see. As I, I tell you, the most of the things should happen in the recalls, whatever, it may not take so much time. By the end of this year, maybe by December, we should all these things should get, should get settled. It should not go beyond that. That's what we are expecting because we are in the month of August. See, we are now September, October, November, December. We have got uh, four months uh, here. So in the four months' time, see, the recalls, uh, mostly it will be known. It will not take time. If there is any other consequential uh, liabilities or anything like that, anything is there, it may take some time. But certainly, I think by December, we should have a very uh, clarity. And beyond uh, the December, in the Q4, it may not be much. Q3, you should be able to settle everything. Okay. Okay. So, so this is very helpful. Many thanks. Thank you. Right. Thank you, sir. Next question comes from Ayush Mittal from Mittal Analytics. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Am I audible? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Good afternoon, sir. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, sir, so, so first of all, congratulations on a good performance given the circumstances and other challenges. Um, it was very heartening to see the strong growth in feed segment, and uh, you had mentioned about this in the earlier call also. Uh, so, sir, can you give us some idea as to the strong volume growth that we have seen in this quarter? How much of this do you see uh, to be maintained in coming season, in coming quarters? Uh, Mr. Rais, we don't see any reason why this should not be maintained. See, we have been only growing. We have not seen us going down. We have been maintaining and we continue to maintain. We have got all wherewithal to uh, maintain this uh, growth. And uh, this, uh, uh, you know, you can't uh, get a uh, super uh, growth, but definitely the growth which you have shown, it will now not go down. It depends upon the, uh, we think that it will be share will be about 48 to 50 percent. 48 to 50 percent share will be maintained in the overall, in the coming quarters also. And uh, so what I tend to understand is the volume growth uh, in the absolute uh, change is very high. Uh, the absolute number now, the quantity that we are doing. So uh, this kind of year-on-year -year change, do we expect to see for the coming times also? Yeah. And yeah, if yes, then we... Yeah. yeah. I, no, I and, the, you are, now I understood your question. That yeah. the, what is it that the consumption of the feed depends on yeah. the culture. So the, because yeah. uh, what happened was the last year, the the, uh, the culture was very, very uh, down because of the COVID impact. But this yeah. year, the climate was good, the culture conditions were good, and good prices were there, farm gate prices were there, and the farmers uh, felt very confident of starting off. And uh, they started off early in uh, February itself, January and February, they started the culture. And all through the culture, the climate has uh, really helped a lot and the growth was very good. And uh, the, most of the, our feed also performed very well, it has given a very good results. And we had not only the, the you compared to the previous quarter, the previous quarter, of course, as you know, it will be the, the beginning, it will not be there, but the second quarter, naturally, the peak quarter, it will be there. The, uh, normally, the consumption is more. This time, what has happened is, because uh, uh, compared to last year, there is a area has gone up, the results were good, and a lot of conversions also have taken place because our feed performed very well. So these are the reasons which we have been able to see a, a significant growth in two aspects. One is if you compare with the corresponding quarter of the previous year, because the reason of the COVID impact last year, we are finding the increase. And the, as far as the previous is, quarter is concerned, this quarter, naturally the uh, April, May, June quarter is uh, the peak season for aquaculture. Added to that, we have a good uh, uh, conversions and good performance during the quarter has helped us to uh, record this. And uh, if this kind of uh, the trend of consumption uh, continues, we continue to have our share uh, as it is now. Thank you. Got it. Uh, so, sir, uh, uh, it also means that the industry, because the fields have also grown at a very high rate in this quarter. 
So overall, industry in India has grown at a very high rate uh, for this season. Is that right? Yes, because the, 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 it all depends upon the uh, uh, conditions. The conditions mm -hmm. like uh, they start from the uh, good availability of good sea, uh, then you will have uh, good climatic conditions, then good farm gate prices, for good export prices. I think in the chain, mm -hmm. all things come in favor. Naturally, everyone mm -hmm. will be induced to uh, go with a larger area and uh, the higher uh, naturally it results in higher consumption and higher production of uh, shims. Is it not? Yeah. Uh, sir, second, uh, uh, around the uh, if there's the contamination issue that we have had in our shrimp processing business, uh, there has been an unfortunate. And we are trying everything to bring things back in control. But have you been able to study any other companies which have gone through this issue, and how does it impact the volumes going forward for us? Like, uh, are we facing lower volumes of our customers for coming quarters or season, given this uh, uncertainty that has brought for the company? Nikesh, uh, can you answer this yeah. question, Nikesh? Yeah, yeah, um, I will. So, hi, uh, I hope you're doing well. Um, so uh, on the impact, so we've been engaging senior food safety consultants, including a lot of uh, ex-FDA uh, compliance officers, in uh, com uh, assisting us to build a robust and the most advanced food uh, safety system in the world. I'm not talking not only in India, but the world. These include the uh, people from the Canada Food Safety Association, the US FDA, the Indian uh, counterparts, etc. So, as we uh, discussed with them, the first thing is that it's a food processing industry. Major food processors, including Tyson Foods, who had the recall of about 9 million pounds of chicken today, uh, or Kellogg, or Juice. These are uh, in the US market, the regulatory environment is continuously increasing. Uh, the inspections have increased substantially this year. So it is a continuing phenomenon, but definitely uh, the FDA and uh, the regulatory authorities work with the facility to ensure the food safety system is upgraded. And we are presenting to them the most robust food safety system uh, implementing new equipment, doing testing, the US FDA uh, style, using their own uh, same equipment they do to have more accurate results as they would. So coming to would it impact the volume uh, on the long term? Definitely not, uh, because once this, uh, we've already got tremendous results on the new systems that we've implemented and the corrective actions that we've taken. We are in constant communication with our customers about uh, the updates and uh, they have also in turn been, actually we've tested almost around 40 to 45 containers with FDA and uh, found to be no contamination. So things are going in the right direction. Um, this is a short-term uh, impact, but uh, definitely when the system, as the system shows its results, um, any other long-term impact would be uh, mitigated. I hope that yeah. answers your question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one final question from my side. Given uh, the growth in the industry that we are seeing after a gap of two, three years, are we planning for the KPEX or expansion for both of our segments? As far as the uh, feed is concerned, we do, uh, uh, we have plans. We wanted to uh, implement, you know, uh, increase the capacity by 1 lakh tons of shims. And we are also planning to have feed, uh, fish feed also. We are planning, with, in fact, this has been delayed uh, as uh, our CMD mentioned in the recent AGM that because of this uh, COVID situation and uh, the, the, there's no uh, of, uh, you know, proper communications and all uh, with the, the uh, suppliers of uh, uh, missionary. We are now in touch with them, and as soon as the things uh, to improve, we want to go ahead with that. Most probably, uh, once we have the quotations or we are getting quotations from them for the missionaries and all, we plan, and maybe in the next quarter or so, by end of this year, we'll come out with the details of the plan.
Okay, and processing? Okay. So on the processing side, I would like to say that uh, we've already completed an expansion of one of our units, uh, but now the is to increase the systems. And once uh, these systems show effective performance, because we're talking about the full proof uh, system, both in terms of microbiology, monitoring, um, et cetera. So once these, like uh, also I've said, we've invested in new testing equipment, uh, what the FDA uses. Um, so our, the CapEx is more towards the machinery and the existing facilities. But uh, as of now, no uh, immediate uh, future expansion plan. But once we get more clarity out of uh, this regulatory issue, we should be uh, looking to further grow the business. We uh, have I, 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 lower uh, capacity okay. utilization. Uh, okay. okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. We already have lower capacity utilization, so we're going to build up the utilization to uh, 80, 90 percent level, add new products into the product line. Uh, manage them efficiently and then go for volume growth, uh, more volume growth rather than going for volume growth without capacity utilization. Actually, I may add to what uh, Niklesh, uh, Niklesh said that uh, we did discuss these issues and uh, we are hopeful that all these uh, regulatory issues and, uh, could be resolved maybe in a quarter, uh, three months' time. And we do have a plan of, uh, you know, modernizing the earlier plans and also go for further expansion of the productivity. And uh, we have uh, earmarked about 100 crores for the uh, our expansions. In the maybe that was uh, recently we were discussing in our planning uh, strategies. And uh, we may, along with that, we may come with this. And maybe once we, as Nikesh uh, said, we resolve this regulatory issue, uh, by end of uh, this year and early next year, we should be able to come with some uh, concrete plan on this. But as, they, as of now, we have earmarked about uh, 100 course for uh, in case of any expansion required to be done. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Very helpful. We show the best. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a question, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. And participants are kindly requested to restrict with two questions in the initial round and may join the queue for further questions. Next question comes from Nitin Avasti from Incred Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, in your opening remarks, you mentioned something on the GMO front, and I couldn't catch it clearly, uh, if you could just uh, reiterate what it was, that are we allowed to import it right now? Are we placing orders for the GMO crop, uh, soya meal, and are we getting it, or is, are there still regulatory hurdles? Yeah. Uh, see, yes, you are right. See, this, uh, now, uh, uh, India, we never allowed, the government never allowed earlier import of uh, GM products. However, because the prices were going up unabated and uh, uncontrolled, they, because uh, one of the reasons of uh, this steep hike in the soybean meat price has been the uh, commodity trading, you know, commodity trading and the hedging by the uh, these traders has resulted in a very steep hike. So uh, the government uh, has the allowed import of soybean meat, but there are certain regulatory issues like See, we have a regulation that there are four ministries they involved in this. Recently, they have announced that import is permitted. The 15 lakh tons uh, the government has permitted the GM soya bean meal. But only the thing is the processing and the, pro the, the system, how it should be imported, is to be given by the regulatory authorities like DGFT and customs. See, the, we have uh, placed an order for import of uh, GM soybean meal. Uh, 
uh, that uh, yesterday there was a news that the information has come from the uh, the revenue ministry, the finance ministry, the revenue department, custom saying that we have to take uh, some approvals, and it has been uh, directed to back to the uh, finance, uh, the uh, agriculture, I mean, the fisheries ministry, the fisheries ministry in touch with the uh, the forest uh, and uh, environment and uh, climate change. They have to give this approval under GEAC, which is called a generic, uh, uh, what is called, uh, uh, approval authority, genetic engineering approval authority. This is a body which has to give permission for import of any genetically modified organism. Initially, they said that since a crushed seed which has no live organism, so they can be imported and this does not fall under GEAC. But however, the customs department has now raised this issue saying that no, no, it requires uh, a GEAC approval. So that, that has been taken up now and most probably on Monday, Tuesday, the notification will come from uh, GEAC approving the, uh, the product to be imported as well as by the DTFP by policy change. By import-export policy has to be uh, modified accordingly, permitting import of genetically modified uh, GMs I have been made. We are expecting that uh, two, three uh, days it will come. And we have already placed orders for import of uh, the soybean meal uh, from Vietnam. So we maybe the expected as on date the expected shipment is around 10th of September. So the it will reach about 20th of September. This product should come. And moreover, the, the that time you we are going to get a new crop of soybean meal in India also. Uh, starting with uh, Maharashtra, like Sangli, Sangli and all, there the, uh, the harvest will start in the second half of September. So I think that we will be having the local uh, soybean meal also available, as well as the imported soybean meal. So with that, the pressure on the, uh, the uh, soybean meal uh, will uh, decrease, will come down, and prices are likely to be stabilized. That we are expecting it's a softening of prices will happen uh, sometime after mid September. It's what our expectation is about. No, but sir. I and uh, yes, sir, go ahead. Yeah, see, what I'm saying is that the we can expect softening of uh, soybean meal prices from mid September, later, later part of September. Okay, sir, got it. Uh, also, sir, the landed cost of the orders you have placed for the GMO soya? Quantity. No, no, not quantity. Quantity would be, of course, subject to a lot of things. Uh, the price per kg, uh, if you could just give it the rough price, and of course, there will be a lot of years in there. But uh, approximately, what is the landed cost uh, you're getting that uh, product for? Yeah, uh, as of now, we are expecting it to be around 65 to 70 rupees landed cost. 65 to 70 rupees, okay. And if you import it from uh, and anywhere else in the world, let's say US or in Brazil or something like that, would it still be the same yeah, cost? Yeah, yeah. See, the, the trading, we have not contacted. Only a couple of traders have come forward because the, still the policy of the government is not very clear. They have not yet come with a clear notification under customs that it, uh, it can be imported and the DGFT policy also is not clear. So everyone is uh, sitting fingers crossed. Once the DGFT as well as the customs give a notification that GM soya bean meal is permitted to be imported, then uh, the more and more suppliers would be willing to supply to India. We have contacted other suppliers also, but they are saying that uh, let us know the policy in India. But, uh, uh, we are waiting for that. Most probably next week some development will take place on this. No, it's understood. Uh, also, the, on the Thank you, Nitin, sir. You may join the queue for your further questions. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a question, please press star N1 on your telephone keypad. And participants are kindly requested to restrict with one question in the initial round and may join the queue for further questions. Next question comes from Ashwini Agarwal, 
from Ashmore Investment Management India. Please go ahead. Um, hi, good afternoon. I just wanted uh, some uh, uh, you know comments on how you see the industry evolving because right now we are seeing several headwinds all at the same time. We are seeing the costs of raw material in the whole you know shrimp uh, growing business or shrimp farming business going up. Uh, we are seeing uh, shipping uh, costs go up a lot. You are obviously uh, going to face more costs on compliance as you install new equipment and conduct new tests. Packaging material costs have also gone up. At the same time, China as a buyer uh, for frozen shrimp from India has more or less disappeared. So, you know, looking at this industry scenario, how do you see the scope to expand your uh, revenue, your exports to other countries? Or does this mean that, uh, you know, we may be in for a tough industry scenario for the next uh, 12 to 18 months? Okay, let me answer first the question of your uh, sustenance of the industry. Mm -hmm. Let me answer about the feed first. The uh, feed is uh, directly connected to the production. The production is again on the basis of the demand. So the, the demand for exports. And the demand for export depends on the, uh, the consumption, demand for consumption. So we do not foresee any reduction or fall in the consumption, uh, demand for consumption of shrimps uh, globally uh, in uh, near future. That is, uh, there is only uh, the increase in the demand, but not the decrease. Whatever has happened in the last couple of years is something because of the COVID-19. It is only, I would say, in an aberration. It is not a continuous process or a, uh, it is not perpetual. It is only very short time uh, impact. Coming to the uh, feed division, the raw material prices, again, I would uh, put it, that uh, the impact of COVID uh, to some extent, and some of the uh, policies the, the, that we are uh, taking. Uh, maybe uh, if you look at the government policy at one time, they encouraged the export of uh, soya. So there is a big export of soya to other countries. When the Brazilian crop and uh, American crop failed, so there was a lot of export of soya being built. Uh, the the, uh, the processes, soya processes were getting uh, a much higher price than the local price, so they sorted, and there is a shortage in India. It is again, it could have been monitored by the uh, government and the stakeholders to reduce this, uh, uh, to control the situation. Now, the second thing is, why did the soya prices went up? It is because the, uh, we allowed uh, the uh, commodity trading. Commodity trading is nothing but some sort of, uh, you know, hedging the uh, futures and uh, expecting and going on increasing one-sided without actually transactions taking place. With the result that the, the forward prices, looking at the, there's a lot of holding was there. Looking at the future prices, the holding started. So this again is a, again an, uh, what a man-made uh, uh, situation. So under this situation, it is not nothing, it is only our own regulatory mechanism is not in properly managed. So once we do it, definitely soybean price would have been controlled. On one side, the government uh, generally goes on increasing MSP price in the interest of the farmer. That is good. But at the same time, if you allow the forward trading, that, that then naturally the traders will come into play. They have no business. They buy and sell on paper. Nothing happens. So that is creating an artificial demand for the product. So we hope that we have, we have made several representations to the government to ban the uh, forward trading, the commodity trading in soya. Because it is an essential product, it is a good product, edible soya oil or soya bean meal, a poor man's uh, protein. So they, we made so many representations and it is under consideration. So that is one reason why this, as far as the fish meal is concerned, is again, see what has created is the demand for the, the price of the soya bean meal went up to 105, 110. The, uh, it is more than fish meal price. But from 46 it went to 100 rupees, so I have been made. Whereas it is in 95 to 100. So the, the poultry and all, the one is on the shortage, and the second is they moved to uh, fish meal. So their fish meal price uh, demand went up. 
and they were getting they were getting some export good prices they started exporting so these are all what the uh, some sort of uh, you know uh, our own created problems and we hope that things are slowly settling down the government is also kind enough to understand the uh, the the difficulties of the uh, the industry how and the farmers aquaculture farmers and all several representation they have started giving results one such is the uh, permission for import of uh, soya bean meal and the second once it comes and on the other side the fish meal catches will improve that uh, from the ban there was a ban so the uh, from first august the ban has been lifted so we will have more fish meal and all these things will settle down i think we don't foresee so if you allow the 15 lakh tons of uh, soya bean meal and as it stands today basing on the sowing of soya in india uh, it is almost like more than 100 lakh tons which is uh, much almost uh, same as last year it was also a good crop but for the other uh, reasons the price the product as such the availability was there current year also with this and availability of the soya abundantly uh, in india we see that the uh, prices should stabilize in the next one year and uh, definitely it is going to uh, positively give a impact on the have a positive impact on the industry sir so is there room yeah is there room to increase prices or realization especially looking at the freight costs and what a big impact has it had or the raising of prices is simply not possible I let you know I'm trying to answer the feed prices and let uh, Nikhilish will answer the uh, the export prices the uh, feed prices cannot be no, we have taken as I explained in my initial uh, this one uh, the uh, they, we have taken three times price increase latest being 4 rupees 25 paise in august i think once the uh, the raw material prices uh, stabilizes from next month onwards the things will be much uh, uh, better the performance uh, the we are expecting that there more uh, but we cannot increase the price as we like because we have to look at the uh, feasibility possibility of the aquaculture activity as such for the farmer there should be always a, a reasonable return on his investment that is the farm gate prices and the cost of production of shrimp for the farmer we always keep in because we are in both the uh, processing as well as in the feed we always look at the, uh, the feasibility of the acquiring and the activity and as we have more and more farmers undertaking shrimp culture more and more our feed business and the production also we look that into consideration and we have also certain regulatory issues by state governments and all regarding the Uh, prices all these things we take into consideration and we uh, resort to price hike or the feed only as and when it is absolutely necessary and it is acceptable to the farmers uh, and the regulatory authorities i think as far as the price and the export prices uh, uh, nikesh would you like to take this uh, question yes sir so on the price increase we can see that already the price of uh, the commodity the shrimp commodity has increased this year uh, because of the higher freight prices higher cost higher fuels uh, and all other higher even higher manpower costs so the price has been going uh, higher for the commodity but we need to see uh, how much more higher it can push at the moment um, because we're not only uh, looking at the higher uh, purchase price from the farm level but also higher overhead uh, which are eventually going to be passed on to the customer because it's not related to one facility but it across the world across india i think we've also uh, i mean just to add on to this conversation or another um, topic that we i was talking to a couple of buyers earlier today and yesterday and there's a higher cost for everything today uh, because consumers are essentially staying at working from home higher saving per person whereas the factories etc are people are still turning up to work so there will be an increase in the commodity price 
but it will be uh, it will be governed by the market as such uh, one facility or one country cannot govern it it's the, because it's more from the consumer level it has to increase okay thank you thank you sir ladies and gentlemen due to time constraint that will be the last question for the day now i hand over the floor to mr shervin fernandez for closing comments over to you sir thank you bharati on behalf of cape intech we would like to thank the entire team of avanti for uh, giving us the opportunity to host the call and we appreciate the interest from the investors and analysts for the participation thank you and have a nice day thank you thank you and kevin and thank you thank you ma'am thank you sir ladies and gentlemen this concludes your conference for today thank you for your participation and for using those of us conference call Hello. service you may disconnect your lines now thank you and have a pleasant evening Your conference is no longer being recorded.